Last time out in Florida, it was Ben Dell picking up the upset win in the Orange Cup Regatta, using the momentum from winning one of the toughest heats in SNHL memory to take the win in the Miami Marine Stadium. Now the series heads east to the first of two races on the Ohio. Can the Wounded Warrior Project keep up the momentum and become a contender in the 2021-2022 Rooster Talks presents SNHL Division 1 season National High Point standings? We'll find out in just a little bit. Thunder in the Ohio 2 from Evansville is next. Well, good evening, everyone. My name is Daryl Kinsey, Jr., the voice of Sarah at Hydroplane League, welcoming you to Evansville, Indiana, in round three of the 2021-2022 Division I season. We're getting closer to the midway point of the season, and it's time to start moving if you want to win the championship or keep yourself out of relegation. But before we get into the racing, we first have to thank our sponsor. Rooster Tail Talk is the presenting sponsor of the Rooster Tail Talk Presents Saturday Night Hydroplane League. Join host David Newton on a weekly tour through the fastest sport on the water as Newton sits down with some of the personalities that make this sport great. For more information and to listen to past episodes, head on over to RoosterTailTalk.com. With Carson Kelly moving up to Division 1, there's been a run on first-time winners in Division 2. Did that streak continue in Evansville? Let's find out. It's time for this edition of the D2 Update. And that first-time winner train kept on rolling in SNHL D2 when the series touched down in Evansville. With Pete Lacoste taking the win in the U9 Fiesta Bowling Casino, presents Go Bowling taking the win in the Junior Thunder on the Ohio 2. Lacoste took on a star-studded field of SNHL D2 competition to take the win in race number three of the season, with series points leader Tyler Sams finishing second and former D1 competitor Cy Bowen finishing third to round out the podium. The series continues on to the second of two races on the Ohio as round four heads to Madison for the Indiana Governor's Cup. Coming into this final heat, we are on perfection watch as Tim Johnson in the U50 Miss Tri-Cities qualified on the pole and has won all three of his qualifying heats so far. If Tim can win this final heat, he will be the first driver since DJ Miller in Madison 2019 to finish a night perfect in the Roosevelt Talks Presents SNHL Division 1. Can he do it? Well, he'll have five other racers on the front line with him and one as the trailer to try and take him down for seven boats on the water in total. It's time to decide who's going to win the Thunder on the Ohio 2. Officials, let's turn them loose. And there you see seven unlimited hydroplanes coming to life here at Madison as they head out on to the front stretch for the milling period. Five minutes to decide where they're going to go. Let's see how they got there this evening. And we'll start with Tim Johnson, this U50 Miss Tri-Cities. As you can see, he's finished every time he's on the water. First, another one will give him that perfection we just talked about. And Bo Rarick and the U2 bucket list fully loaded will try to be the first to try and take him down. Qualified ninth, one heat 2A, finished fourth and second in his other qualifying heats. 
U75, DJ Miller, DC presents Death. This next qualified second, two seconds and a third in qualifying. He's on 905 points. And Quinn Miller joins us for the first final of the year. Qualified sixth, went second, fourth, and first in the three qualifying heats this evening. We finished on 909 points. And our national high points leader, not the characteristic day for Eddie Canfuch, only on 955 points, only won one heat. That's 2B and qualified seventh. Matt Johnson qualified fourth, won two of his three qualifying heats come into this final in the U-10 on 1,160 points. And Ben Dowell was not a good night for him. He is our trailer, finished first, fourth, and fourth in his heats and qualified 11th to get here on 768 points. So that is your lineup here in the final. As the boats continue around in the milling period, there is the Miss Tri-Cities. Looking for perfection, but Tim Johnson's got to find his right lane here as you're under three minutes. Cannot think about that perfection until he does two things. Hit that one-minute pin and then hit that start. As you can see, as Tim Johnson moves around on the left side, you've got your trailing party, or trolling party, rather. That's most of our field there on the left side. The only two boats still moving, Tim Johnson and Matt Johnson. So the Johnson brothers... Continuing on at speed while the rest of our field, led by the U1 Cheerios of Eddie Canfus, trolling there in turn number one. You can see Bo Rarick and Buckalist Fully Lotus starting to sneak up on the left of DC present Steph, just letting the current carry him around as you'll see Tim Johnson passing all. Actually, that was Matt Johnson, rather, passing all of them in that beautiful Matt Johnson design. As you're now under two minutes and ten seconds to the start. Is now Tim's going to kill the power. DC presents Death decided he's going to move up as well. As they come around the corner, you see the day's pay there with Jared Meyer. That is our alternate for this heat. If something happens to one of these boats in the next 50 seconds, he will be able to join up and fight for lanes as the seventh racer in this heat. But for right now, looks like we're going to be okay as Tim Johnson starting to slow down a little bit not gonna have time to troll it's gonna try to get a run around the outside it looks like as we're now about 35 seconds to the start of this thing as we've got the u1 now back in front of quentin miller and Stu self-service garage so those boats on the left side now starting to get up the power dc presents devs gonna take the hole there that was left by the u24 and get to the front of this trolling pack as tim johnson starts to catch up with them as we're under 20 seconds got to get ready to get around to that commitment buoy right there in the middle of your screen while matt johnson is trying an interesting strategy he's sitting right at the buoy as we're under five seconds under three seconds two seconds one mark we're gonna have one boat that's gonna have to go back around that's going to be i believe no that was eddie canfu that has to go back around so eddie has to go back around the fight for lanes begins and that's gonna leave the u24 stew self-service garage with the number one lane as they head down the front str back straightaway rather tim johnson is going to be in lane number three bucket list fully loaded will be in lane number two as they gone past the commitment buoy and get themselves set up here in turn number two getting ready for this run to the straightaway so tim johnson is going to be in lane number three usually that is not the preferred lane but here with this unique turn number one that might be the lane you want to be in as D DC presents Deft and the U1 and Matt Johnson Design join us. So not as big of a penalty for Eddie Canfu. So they will have to start on the outside. They're under 10 seconds. And Quinn Miller is going to lead us down to the start finish line. But DC presents Deft. DJ, DJ Miller got a great run as we're under green. This thunder on the Ohio 2 was underway. And DJ Miller either jumped that start or treat it as they head into turn one. He's going to have the lead with the U1 on his outside. But Quinn Miller's in second in lane number one. He's going to sneak up there and take the lead. And DC Resistance Dev did jump the gun. So now DJ Miller is not a factor here. The battle between the U24 and the U50 is heading down the back stretch for the first time. And look at Tim Johnson go. He's flying the boat down the back stretch, heading towards turn number two. And he's going to take the lead from Quentin Miller. Bring the U50 to the front. It's going to be the U24 in second as they head through turn number two. As 
Tim Johnson has starts to try to extend that lead. He's going to move all the way over now to lane number two. Going to pinch the U24 in there as tight as possible as a head to start lap number two at Miss Tri Cities leading the way. Suso Service Garage in second, and the U1 Cheerios in third. So a good rally back for Eddie Canfouche as we focus on our leader in turn number two. Ryan Long with Quentin Miller has to stay out of that weight to his outside. A little bit of net coat there, but he's fine. But he's starting to lose touch with our leader already back a full rooster tail as the U50 used that outside lane to his advantage and is now flying down the back stretch. Tim Johnson been so fast this evening, set a course and SNHL speed record in qualifying and he's showing that speed was not a fluke as he heads to turn number two. Down this double dog leg front straight away. Head to start finish line, but we just start lap number three. And you can see the advantage on your screen is a full rooster tail between Stu Self Service Garage with the U1 remaining in third as they head back to turn number one. You can see DJ Miller still staying in there holding tight. Really challenging that U1 as you see that race on your picture. Now, this is not for position. The U75 is a lap down with that penalty for jumping the gun. He can still race that U1 because if something happens to the U24 or this U50, that could end up gaining a spot for the U75 in the end. We'll see how things go though in these remaining couple of laps as Tim Johnson is just running away with this race. He's now jumped in the lane one as he's got that rooster tail overlap as he comes off turn number two to start the championship laps. Lap number four goes up on the board and that beautiful red and gray U50 Miss Tri-Cities continues to lead the way over Stu Self-Service Garage and U1 Cheerios as we head into turn away. You can see the U50 bouncing along as we come through the course as we jump back now. The U1 has finally left the U75 and Eddie Canfouche is now going to set sail and try to catch up to the U24. He's got speed there on the outside and we've seen that might be a better way to get through that turn number one. But right now the U50's got no one around him but clean water and that's just what you want to see as the leader as he heads to turn number two giving enough giving plenty of room rather to those buoys there to mark out the turns hits the exit buoy and comes towards start finish line with perfection on his mind tim johnson takes the white flag one more time around and the u50 is going to have a perfect evening in SNHL division one as the u50 comes through turn number one. We jump back now to the battle for second. Quentin Miller has a spot. Eddie Canfouche wants it. He's charging on the outside. He has to turn number two. He's going to jump to the inside. So now Eddie Canfouche is going to have the advantage of the inside line, but he couldn't hold it, and the U1's going to kick to the outside. That should, should secure second, rather, for Quentin Miller. And what's going to secure perfection for the U50 is coming in just half a turn. Tim Johnson heads through turn number one. He's bested. Some of Roostail Talks presents SNHL D1's best. And for the first time since 2019, there's perfection in D1. Tim Johnson wins. Thunder on the Ohio 2. Quinn Miller's going to hold on for second. Third is going to be the U1 Cheerios of Eddie Canfouche. Matt Johnson is going to come home in fourth here in Matt Johnson Design. As you see the finishing order there on your screen, everyone came home here. DJ Miller ends up seventh. And there is your point standings after three rounds with the Cheerios. Now only 181 points up on Matt Johnson Design and DC presents Steph. So the battle at the top of our national high points ladder starting to tighten as we head into head into round number four in Madison, Indiana. But for now, Tim Johnson has claimed perfection in Rootsdale Talk presents SNHL D1. Let's talk to him. Tim Johnson, perfection at Evansville. Tim, you set the two-mile course record, and it was all up from there. You are the first driver since 2019 in Division One to end the night perfect. How does it feel? It was my first win in an SNHL race, and doing it with perfection is just surreal. 
you came in with a lot of speed and you said that you know you had a rough start to the season you made those outside lines though work tonight does the shape of turn one really lend to what we saw where the the outside line at least for you was the deciding factor yeah it really depends on kind of who's in lane one and what line they're taking if they take that kind of squared off corner then they're going to lose a lot of speed and i'm able to kind of capitalize on on the outside and carry it through the turn so i definitely got lucky with that well tonight you picked up third you picked up 1700 points that has catapulted you all the way up to sixth in the point standings you're gonna call you're climbing into this championship battle tim congratulations on a perfect night thank you very much daryl that'll do it here at evansville next time out we'll be in madison indiana for the indiana governor's cup russo talks presents snhl d1 you can see that race december 18th live on uhl hydra planes on facebook action gets started at 7 30 p.m we hope to see you then but for now tim johnson reigns supreme in evansville we'll see you guys next time out in madison my name is daryl kinsey jr the voice of saturday night hydra plane league Thank you so much for joining us. We will see you next time. Have a wonderful evening.